Another example of this. A long time ago, I was in a masjid, and I was sitting there, and um, the fellow used to, after Maghrib prayer, this was back in college, after Maghrib prayer, he used to recite a hadith. He used to open a book of hadith and recite a hadith. And he recited this hadith about qaza. And qaza is the ritual of uneven haircuts. You know how like some people get mushroom haircuts, like they got like shaved over here and like whatever, or it's short hair and long hair or whatever. Or people do like a mohawk or whatever they do, right? If your hair is not even and it's not all equally sized, then it can qualify as qaza. And in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he forbade qaza. And this fellow is explaining this hadith and he's, he reads the hadith and says, brothers, check your hair. Oh, somebody's hair is short over here and longer over here. Astaghfirullah, inna lillahi wa I gotta go get a machine that mows this equally because the Prophet ﷺ forbade qaza. And then you go back to Ibn Hajar Asqalani's commentary, other scholars' commentary, because you know, a hadith is a statement of the Prophet ﷺ, yes or no? Right, it's a statement of the Prophet ﷺ. But the statement of the Prophet ﷺ didn't originate in a book. It was part of a conversation with somebody that happened at a certain place, at a certain time, with certain people around. And when you understand context, then you understand what a person actually meant. If a couple of friends are sitting having dinner, and I say to one of them, man, I'm going to kill you. You better stop, I'm going to kill you. And then somebody quotes, Ustad Luman said, I am going to kill you. And he meant, and they, they interpret this as murder or something. Else. In that context, am I joking around? Am I being sarcastic? Am I speaking for you? Yeah, sure. But in, if you take it out of context, can it mean something entirely different? Yeah. So in the context of that hadith, what do you find? Before Islam, when people used to have cute babies, they'd get really scared that a jinn will become attracted to this baby and he will be possessed by a demon. So they would make sure that they cut one lop of hair from this side, a lock from this side, a lock from that side, give the kid an ugly haircut so the jinn says, that looks uglier than me, he leaves him alone. Okay? Because the jinn are attracted to good looking kids, so he's going to leave them alone. And this was the practice the Prophet ﷺ found. Qaza. And he said, don't do this. When he said, don't do this, was he forbidding haircuts? Or was he forbidding superstition? He's forbidding superstition. But if you don't know that context, you think the law is your hair better be six centimeters here and six centimeters here and six centimeters here. Otherwise, you're against the sunnah. That's a problem, isn't it? But when someone interprets it and says, this is the law, this is what it means. You know, I've even heard people say things like, in, again, in, in, in a hadith narration, it was a hadith about obedience to parents. And we know how, how much Qur'an emphasizes obedience.